Okay, so we're using the, in this video clip, uh, we're following up from the previous video and we're looking at the operation of margin accounts. And we had uh, a spreadsheet developed uh, in conjunction with an example provided by John C. Hull, where we looked at uh, a long forward contract, two long forward contracts, in fact. So we have two long forward contracts where we're going long on gold, 100 ounces in each contract. And we agree in June to purchase um, gold in December. And the our timeline here is, is six months. And uh, we agree to purchase the gold at $400. And then we're looking at the effect of a change, a daily change in the uh, underlying. Uh, and as it turns out, the price uh, in the example provided by John C. Hall, the price up at day 16 went down to 3, 9, to 2, uh, 30. Okay, and if we look at this, that is a loss on the contract of uh, 770. Okay, so we're looking at a trade on the long futures position of 770 because we've contracted to buy at 400. And we're currently in a situation where the value is sitting at 300, 392.30. And that represents a loss to the person with the long position of 770. So we're scaling that by how much? We have to scale that by uh, 200 ounces. So if we take that 770 and we multiply by 200, then the loss there is 1,540. Okay, now uh, the margin works in such a way that every day as there is a fluctuation in the price of gold, money either comes in or goes out. If you have a long position, if the price goes up, then we're gaining. If the price goes down, uh, if the price goes down, we're losing on the position. So, so and... In what we have found here is the price at day 16 went down to 392. So per for each ounce, it is 720. Scaling by 200, that means uh, in dollar terms, 1,540. The initial maintenance, initial margin, the initial margin here was 400. And if we take out 400, uh, 4,000, Initial margin was four thousand, uh, and if we if we subtract out the one thousand five hundred and forty, right, that then means in our margin account we would have had uh, sixty four and two two thousand four hundred and sixty. But we had included in uh, margin calls of 1,340 and then an, a second additional margin of 1,260. And that would have brought us up then to 60. Uh, we have 10 and 5. So 5,060 in the margin account. So we had two margin calls, margin call one, margin call two, and in finally in the margin account, we had a sum of uh, 5,060. The total loss, however, in terms of the position was the 1,000, 1,440. Now we'll take a look at the spreadsheet. Let's go into the spreadsheet. So I'll pause for a second and go into uh, the spreadsheet.
Okay, so in the spreadsheet, what we had was the price fluctuated, it went up and down, but ultimately we went through the 3,000 mark, which is the maintenance margin. Once the, the value of the uh, ounce of gold fell uh, to 393, that triggered a margin call of 1,340, which topped us up to 4,000. The price ultimately fell again. Uh, we went down to 2,740 in the margin account. That triggered an additional margin call of 1,260. We paid in, we paid in. If we didn't pay in, the exchange doesn't hang around. It closes out our futures position and can take the money that's in the margin account. So if we don't fulfill in real time, if we don't fulfill the daily settlement, should I say, then the, our position is closed out. And that would mean that there's no loss here that can uh, go back. That protects, if you like, the counterparty with the short position and it protects the exchange itself. And so the margin account introduces, if you like, a heuristic that uh, prevents us from easily walking away from our obligations. Uh, it's a relatively cheap, uh, low cost uh, remedy uh, uh, when we compare two alternatives, particularly if we have, we have to introduce legal remedies and go through a legal system uh, or extrajudicial, or you can imagine uh, trying to introduce uh, some kind of moral argument to convince people who are unwilling to take a loss. Uh, the margin account uh, uh, sorts this problem out neatly. And I've done a simulation here uh, where basically I've taken the same example again, but I've simulated the, the value, uh, the price value uh, using a geometric Brownian motion. So uh, we would have seen something similar to this in Monte Carlo type of analysis. And if I press, basically what we're replicating here is if I press F9, um, if I press uh, function F9, we can re keep regenerating and we can look at the scale of the loss. The loss here is equivalent to, we take the initial margin, we sum up the margin calls, uh, in this case there was none, and then the value at the end. And because the price actually went up in this case from 400 to 411, if you have the long position, then you're gaining and uh, you gain to the tune in this case, uh, uh, you've taken a loss. Let's uh, just note here that this is the loss position. Loss position. And we can obtain that. So in this case, it's a gain uh, because the price went up and we could have calculated that gain as being the difference between the two multiplied by escape multiplied by 200 right been multiplied by 200 so the difference between these two prices multiplied by 200 gives us the gain or loss because it went up it's a gain or a negative loss uh, because the price uh, and likewise we we could have obtained the same by just simply this sum the initial margin some of the margin calls, and then subtracted what was in the account at the end. And that also would give us the gain. Now let's go F9 and see if in a negative uh, actual where the price goes down. So in this case, the price went down quite substantially from 400 to 384. That's quite a substantial loss. Uh, and we're going to scale it here. That's, uh, that triggered two margin calls. So overall, the loss here would have been equivalent to, so the loss in this position, we started off with 4,000, we got two margin calls because of two successive dates of fairly substantial declines. There was 1,268 paid in, in 1,550, and then at the end we had 3,711. So cumulatively, that's a loss of 3,107, 39, but that's equivalent to the difference between the 400 and a drop of 384, which is 1554, multiplied by 200 would yield 
same figures before, 3,107, 3,107. If we run again, F9, no loss, no uh, quite a loss, and producing margin calls. Here we have an interesting uh, behavior in the price. The price went down, ultimately. We took a heavy loss of 3,349. The way that produced margin calls, you can look at the pattern of the pricing. The pricing fell uh, on these dates, and that precipitated a topping up. You had to top up. That was a fairly substantial top up in uh, between day five and day six, with the top up by 3,099, 1,247.69 subsequently. And you can see uh, when we sum the initial margin, the margin calls subtract away what was left in the account at the end. Uh, the loss there was 3,349. Alternatively, we could have estimated that by uh, taking the difference between the original price of 400, the delivery price, if you like, and then where the futures price went to after 16 days. Because there's 200 ounces on both the contracts, that produces a loss of the same amount, right? a loss of 3,349. And you can see here, this margin account, this margin accounting replicates the gain or loss on the position. The only uh, where uh, we might uh, look at some differences that occur here relative to a forward contract, There's, there are some timing differences, obviously. Uh, the money, it, with a margin account, obviously money leaves your account uh, prior to the loss being sustained on a forward account. So that, that is a, a, a difference. But probably in a low interest environment, it's very, very marginal. Okay, so that's some explanation of a margin account. Um, and uh, we can see that it's, um, it allows us to 